Thanks for joining us on What Matters This Week. I'm Lauren Maloney. Here with us this Sunday is John Montez. He is the Regional Disaster Officer for the American Red Cross here. John, thank you so much for being with us. Lauren, I'm super happy to be here. Thanks for having me. We are nearly a month after the initial rainstorm. Um, after things have settled down just a little bit, how do you foresee the next few weeks, even months, playing out? Well, I think that the recovery from this event is going to take quite a while. Um, you know, one thing I will say, uh, having been in Vermont since it started, is th the people here are just incredibly resilient and they help each other. Um, so what we're seeing out there is people were rebuilding two and three days later and neighbors were out there helping each other. Um, but, you know, it's going to take a long time because the effects of the storm aren't just the physical effects to people's homes and, and roadways and things like that, but it's also the mental effects and the emotional effects of the storm. So I foresee this taking more than months, maybe years. And, you know, I think it's a lot to, it, a big thing for this too is learning from it and doing things to prevent it in the future, but also to be better prepared for it. How can you characterize where in the process the American Red Cross is right now? Yeah, so we've kind of transitioned out of our sort of response phase. And in the response phase, what we're really focused on is sheltering uh, first and foremost. Then we focus on feeding the community and distributing, um, distributing emergency supplies. So like the muck out kits, the clean out kits, rakes, shovels, those things. Um, cleaning uh, stuff for your house to prevent mold. We've kind of transitioned out of that operation and more into um, emotional recovery. So we have uh, disaster mental health services out there that people can connect with, or you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS and connect with them. We also have health services out there, spiritual care services. Then a big thing that we're doing right now is trying to locate anybody that has major damage or destroyed homes so we can provide them with some initial financial assistance. It's not to the level that perhaps FEMA gives if we are eligible for it, but it is some, you know, wanting to cover the, the cost of maybe your deductible and your insurance or to kind of just get things started. So we're making those connections and hoping that those folks reach out to the Red Cross so we can provide them that assistance. How would you say this disaster maybe is different from others that you volunteered for and kind of overseen? Well, I think a big thing is, is that this isn't an area that sees a lot of disasters. Um, so, you know, while Vermont was quite prepared in a lot of ways, um, the flip side is that Vermont's not used to this. Uh, this isn't, you know, the Florida panhandle where it has hurricanes all the time. For California, California, where they have wildfires and mudslides and things, Vermont is such a beautiful place, and it's a place that's just very accommodating to human life, and you don't see these things. So I think the big thing here was kind of the shock of it, and um, the, the the stress of it, and, and the damage that it caused, caused which was pretty significant. Um, the other thing that was very different about this than I've seen in other places, and then maybe it's a Vermont thing, maybe it's a New England thing, but the, the concept of neighbors helping neighbors really shined bright on this response. I mean, on the 11th, so the storm was the 10th, on the 11th, um, I was driving to Killington to our headquarters, and I was driving through neighborhoods along Route 4 and just watching people clean things. A guy came and moved rocks out of the way so I could drive my sedan by um, on Route 4. So it was pretty awesome to see how the miners came out to help each other. What would you say now, you know, a month in, is, is the number one request of people? If, if you went to a home that, that was devastated, yeah. what is their concern right now? I think the biggest request right now is probably financial support. And then the second is mental health support. Those seem to be the two things that we're seeing over and over again right now in this kind of recovery phase of the operation. Um, and, you know, people are worried about how to pay for all these fixes. And, you know, their homes took a lot of damage. And it's, you know, we're focused on the major damage ones, but there's a lot of people that had a lot of water in their basement after this storm. And they want to make sure they don't have mold and other things. And, you know, they're really worried about that. 
Have you come across a lot of people who dealt with Irene and this storm too, this double whammy? We have, and it's funny how much they compare the two to each other. You know, a big thing with this storm is a lot of people to have told us that it was worse than Irene um, because it was so, <laughs> excuse me, it was so unexpected. You know, Irene, it was like, the storm is coming, it's going to be bad. It was still a surprise how much flooding there was for people, but in this storm, it was like, oh, it's going to rain, there's going to be thunderstorms. I don't think people expected the level of devastation that occurred. In your role as a disaster officer, what are you still worried about as the weeks become months and then we, unfortunately, a, a year goes by? So, you know, when I think about the future and what my role is, I think a big thing for me is making sure that I can partner with communities and the state so that we're really prepared to shelter people if this happens again. Um, you know, I think we've been really lucky that we have such a great relationship with the state emergency management and the agency of health. Um, and we've partnered with a lot of really awesome communities. Barry's been wonderful to us. Uh, White River Junction, Rutland, where we ran Red Cross shelters, amazing. Williston, that was housing our staff at their central school, just amazing people. Um, but I think there's a lot of communities that want to work with us moving forward. And that's, a, that's going to be a big lift, you know, for our volunteers and our staff here in Vermont. So, um, you know, that's a big worry for me is everyone's going to want to meet with us in a few months, in a few weeks, and we don't have that kind of bandwidth right now. We're really focused on this recovery. So, but we will get there. John Montez, I really appreciate your help. Um, and, and I know the people of Vermont do as well. Thank you so much for talking with us. Absolutely. Anytime. And we will hear from um, that mental health disaster coordinator in just a few minutes as well.